I've had uh, the pleasure of coming to know Mark Stevens and meeting with him uh, on a couple of occasions. And uh, the long and the short of it, I'm going to give a, a little bit of an intro, but the long and the short of it is he's a fascinating guy. Very interesting, very passionate, very fascinating. He is Chief Executive Officer of MSC, MSCO, uh, which, uh, to uh, paraphrase um, uh, the Wizard and the Wizard of Oz, to use the vernacular of the peasantry, uh, his firm is uh, YourMarketingSucks.com. But, but many of you uh, have been hearing his commercials on the radio, and he's got a very interesting series of commercials, which, which I've been catching on WCBS Radio. The firm is not your ordinary marketing consulting service. Uh, the company officials term the organization as a business-driven, entrepreneurial-minded marketing comp company relentlessly dedicated to accelerating the growth of its clients. Don't ask me to say that again because there's too much alliteration there. I'll, I'll fall over my, my, my words. He's also not only a, a leading marketing expert and image consultant, he's also a best-selling author. He has a nationally syndicated column, Small Business, which has been cited by the John Hancock Awards for Outstanding Financial Journalism, for its lucid reporting and excellent interpretation of the nation's business climate. In fact, the next time we have an economist, I'm going to have him on the panel. Maybe he can get something uh, uh, out of the economist that's, that's, uh, that's clear and under understandable. Uh, he's also featured in many sectors of the media, uh, as well as through his books. Uh, please welcome, we're most happy to have him here as our guest speaker on the importance of marketing uh, for your business, Mark Stevens. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. So, the first thing I uh, want to talk about is um, what is marketing? So, there's so many different, if I ask everybody in this room to describe marketing to me, looks like there's about 50 people here, I'm going to get 50 different answers. And that's actually one of the problems of marketing. So is marketing websites? Is it SEO? Is it advertising? Like we do, and I'll tell you about that advertising because I think it's sort of a lesson for how you do marketing. And you learn the hard way. Um, is it uh, public relations? Is it events? Sure. How's this? Better. Better? Um, so, uh, really, marketing is none of those things I just mentioned. Websites, SEO, PR, advertising, social media. It's none of those things. And it's all of those things. But it all rolls up into one thing for all of you because you're all in business and there's only one thing that you want from your business, which is growth. And so all of marketing's initiatives, whatever they are, come to the means, unless you can monetize them, unless they can absolutely grow your business and put more revenue and ultimately more profit in your uh, corporate accounts and, in your, and to you personally. Uh, that's what actually led me to found my firm 21 years ago. I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. Uh, I started at the age of 15, my first business. I built businesses and sold them. Throughout that career of buying businesses and selling them, all I ever cared about, as you folks know, is how could I drive revenue? How could I drive profitability? And over the years, I hired marketing firms to help me with that process. I sold a large business in 93, and I said to my wife, I'm retiring. And we went to Anguilla, the island of the Caribbean, and I was done for three weeks. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> and there's a grand farewell to everybody and all that, and we're going to experiment with this Caribbean life, and I was going to live on a beach and sort of just pontificate and think. Um, I realized I had to build another business. It's in my DNA. When you start at 15 and never have had a job uh, other than building your own companies and selling them, um, I had to come back. And um, during my hiatus between 1993 and 95, when I founded MSCO, the firm that I run now, of which I sold half of two and a half years ago, because I believe in building and selling. Uh, I decided to go into marketing because I could never hire a good marketing firm. And I tried, local firms, national firms, um, firms of different types of specialty, 
I'm sure there are some very good marketing firms, perhaps some better than mine. I'm not making that claim. I couldn't find them. And what I mean by that is a firm that knew how to get revenue driven, return on investment, drive business growth. And what I wanted my firm to be, and what I think marketing should be, is how do we take any of your businesses and drive you to the next level? So if you're doing a million dollars a year, how do you get to two? If you're doing four, how do you get to eight? If you're doing 16, how do you get to 32? And I've actually always believed that businesses, and I held myself to this rule in my current company and in all the companies I've ever owned, I didn't always hit the target immediately, but I always believed that a business should double in size every 18 months. It's a stretch, but achievable one. And if you don't have a stretch, you will not stretch. And you bit, I can't tell many people come into our offices every week, and they tell me, well, my business does $3.2 million. And I say, what was your high point? And they say, 3.3 million, 3.1, and how long did you, uh, did you achieve that? 1995. So you've gone through the last 20 years with no growth. Why is that? Well, and they blame it on something else. Well, we didn't, the internet wasn't there. People paid more. There was less competition. Blah, 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 blah. The world does not care about our inability to adapt. It really wants to make sure that we stay at the cutting edge of whatever it is we do. And I heard so many different businesses and professions and when you all introduce yourself today. And they're all, they're all different, but they're all the same. You wake up in the morning wanting to grow your business. And it doesn't happen by a force of nature. In fact, the force of nature is that business, the, the world does not want your business to grow. You're the only one, and maybe your family, who wants your business to grow, the rest of the world is conspiring actually to make sure it doesn't grow because competitors are going to take the piece of the pie that you have. And even when there's a, a recession, which we have gone through in recent years, and people come into MSCO and complain about to us about, well, it's the recession. Well, no, because even when there's a recession or any kind of financial softening, a real business person, I believe, says, yes, it's more difficult, but my job is to get a bigger piece of a smaller pie. So you find when, when conditions are not attractive, look, you've all been in business long enough to know that the fish don't jump into the net. You have a couple of days a year when that happens, and it seems like it'll go on forever, but it doesn't. And complacency kills uh, good business. You know, uh, I did as Al mentioned, write the book, Your Marketing Sucks, and we've been running for nine years a radio campaign some of you may have heard. I'll explain that for a minute because it's a, it's a metaphor for, I think, one of the ways you do marketing successfully. But um, the genesis of the title for that book was, and I'm not talking about the book, I'm talking about a marketing principle. I wanted to get Smith Barney as a client in uh, early 2000s. So I got the name of the chief marketing officer, and I called him up. I forget his name now, but I wouldn't even use it anyway. And I probably left seven messages, got gatekeepers, got his voicemail, et cetera, and no response. So I figured I'd try one more time and called him one night. I was in the office at 8 o'clock at night. I made one last call. Just so happens he was at his desk. And there was no gatekeeper. The gatekeeper got home. He answers the phone, and I say, this is Mark Stevens. And he knew the name from me, from my quote unquote annoying phone calls. And so he said, no, I, I know already. I know, I, I know who you are. I'm not interested. And as soon as the last interested came out of his lips, I said, well, you should be. So obviously, he wasn't going to be enamored by my, well, you should be. And he said so. He said, well, what do you mean I should be? And then I hit him with something which may seem to you at first blush to be uh, obnoxious, but I had a point to make. And I said, you should be because, and I pregnant paused it for a second, your marketing sucks. That's where the term came from. Now, before he could hang up on me, which certainly was his inclination to do, I said, before you hang up on me, let me tell you why I said that. I'm a client of the private bank. So this point is not a bank. Please write down now, key in my account number. And I was ready for this. And reluctantly, I could hear the, the keys clicking on his computer when I gave my account number. 
And I said, you, you see that I am uh, a client of the private bank, and you'll see, however, that I have substantial assets with you, but I have not made an additional contribution uh, investment with you for five years. And let me tell you why I, ha I don't. Every month I get a statement from you, and you all do. You all get statements from your mutual funds, your banks, wherever you invest your money. And it's never junk mail. You read, always read it. Is there a mistake? Is my account? Did they do it right? What's going on? And I would get a statement from Smith Barney that was 43 pages long. Um, literally. Smith Barney actually had a printing press in um, Brooklyn because um, Sandy Well, who ran the firm at the time, the firm at the time was very cost conscious and he built his own printing firm. But what do you think was missing from the statement? It was actually, this was before there were really more websites. I mean, it was websites, but they weren't, they were not important yet. You know, we built websites, it's interesting story, because we built websites, uh, a division, which is now a division of Wells Fargo Bank, it was called Strong Funds. Some of you may know it was Strong Mutual Funds. They called us in 1996 to build a website. No one knew how to build a website, and there was no pricing market. So nobody knew what to charge. I found somebody to build a website, I still remember his name, Howard Green, a guy in a walk-up in Boston, <laughs> who knew how to build a website. And it was a horrible website, a one-page thing, and we delivered it to uh, Strong Funds down the division of Wells Fargo. And um, so what do you charge when there's no market? And it was actually ridiculous. What we charged them, and they were very happy to have it because it was a very large company. Nobody knew how to do it. So, um, anyway, I uh, I digress for a moment. Um, when I when I um, uh, yes, yeah, so point. So, what's missing from the statement? Forty-three pages of documentation on my investments and what was sold, what was bought, what the earnings were, etc. What do you think was missing? What? No, no, that would be nice, but there was no thank you for business work. Very good. Your dividends Did, about. What? Your dividends. How much? No, 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 no. Oh, that's what? what? Who your no, that was there too. An idea. No idea. Why don't you try our treasury bonds? Why don't you go into our retirement plan? Why don't you try a laddered fund? Why don't you invest in micro Asian stocks? Nothing there to educate you on the potential for other products and services they had. So 43 pages, probably cost them $9 to send this out to, had, I think they had 7 million clients at the time. And not a single little brochure, a piece of paper, something like this, doesn't have to be fancy. Have you tried our laddered muni bond portfolio? You don't know what it is? We're gonna explain it to you very simply. Nothing there. So I told him that on the phone because he stayed on the phone, because he saw that I, who I was, and he said to me after like 10 minutes of silence, would you come in tomorrow and talk to our marketing department? <laughs> and I said, yes, of course I will. I knew I was gonna go into hostile territory, but to make a long story short, we uh, got them as a client, and um, it was very simple. Marketing doesn't have to be Super Bowl advertising stuff. Whatever, whoever it is that you all of you deal with, they do not know everything you do. You think they do, you assume that they do, but upselling and cross-selling people for their benefit, I heard bankers and financial advisors and real estate people and all that kind of stuff, your clients can benefit in so many more ways than the ways that you are now um, serving them. And it's a win-win because when, I, I always believe that good marketing is education. Uh, my book, e Marketing Sucks, has sold 650,000 copies. It's a simple book about how do you market better. I mean, it, it was published in 2003. It was on Business Week's bestsellers for a year. But it's, there's nothing cold fusion in there about it. It's really how do you do the simple things to take your business to the next level, which is what we do for our clients. And I made the decision when I founded MSCO that we were going to focus on small and mid-sized businesses. Because we can make a difference. We have some very large clients, they're 
not the bulk of our business, but we represent Mars Candy and AIG. But we, we can't make a difference there. It's all plain money and nonsense. But in a, in a small and mid-sized business, the opportunity is great. So back to my question, like, what is marketing? It's a stupid term, even though we're a marketing firm. <laughs> But, I, but you have to categorize yourself in some way because people want to, I can't say, well, I don't know what we are. What we are is, what, what, what marketing is to me, marketing, all good marketing, is simply the process of taking your business, no matter what size it is, to the next level. So just, that's what you, if you're not making what I think of as upstream progress, then you're not growing your business and you're not achieving the potential of what you, your life's work is all about. And when I mentioned a moment ago, you know, is it websites, is it PR, is it advertising? So people say, I'm so proud, we spent X dollars and we built a new website. How many of you have felt that way? At one time or another? No one? Is this 1952? <laughs> okay, so, but that's not the thing to ask. The thing to say is, how many people are coming to my site and asking for to buy a product or to have a console that transitions into uh, a, a customer or client relationship. So everything that you do in marketing has to be monetized and all of the analytics has to be tracked every single day. So all of our clients, for example, we monetize every single thing that happens. We give analytical reports every single week we know on a website, for example, how many people visited, what pages did they view, what actions did they take, what pages did they not view, how much was the bounce rate, meaning how many people visited the site and just bounced off, meaning the site sucks. And you've, we've all done that. You've gone looking for running shoes or a doctor online, and you bounced off the site because you said, this is just not what I was looking for. And so you have to um, look at the physics of marketing to make sure that all the elements come together to generate revenue for you. And just a couple of more things. I, uh, I believe in the power of social media, but not most of it. Like most of Facebook is just junk. But you can sell certain things on Facebook. But like I'm very active on LinkedIn, not in the membership hunting and pecking and bothering people for business. It doesn't work. For the most part, it doesn't work. You don't want emails pitching you, and you shouldn't be sending emails pitching other people. It's just another form of annoyance. Um, but you can publish on LinkedIn. And when you publish on LinkedIn, and you publish a compelling story, people come to you. And um, I decided I was going to make myself a national figure on LinkedIn. So I have some posts, like I wrote a post in um, December that ate 800,000 views in 48 hours. It's, it's sort of like you hit the bingo machine in Vegas. You're getting 10,000 views an hour. And those views are not views of only what you wrote, but views of your profile, which is really a website. And if they're interested in what you have to say in your profile, they go over to your website and then they contact you and say, I was intrigued by what you wrote about. I'd like to meet with you and you can get them as a customer or a client. It's very effective because to me the most effective form of marketing is to educate people, as I said in the beginning. If they hear an idea from you and they say, that's an interesting idea, not some pitch from you to sell you something, but an idea. And they say, I, that's an interesting idea, I want to contact that company, that person who proposed or posited that idea. And uh, one, of the, one of the, back to my theory of marketing, it's really math, folks. It's not creativity. People say they go into marketing because I'm a creative person. Well, go be a painter. You know, it's not creativity. There's a place for creativity and everything, and the most creative person who ever lived was Albert Einstein, and he wasn't in marketing. Um, and so um, people don't really understand that physicists and, and, you know, and, and lawyers and, and, and people who are not considered to be uh, somebody was a contractor here. There's so much creativity in everything if we choose to deploy it. But I wrote a post on LinkedIn uh, about a month ago saying, marketing is not a discipline, it's an equation. 
So this is probably, you probably have not heard this before. But what I mean is when I started MSCO in 95, I hired 16 people, I didn't have a client. And I wanted to train my team on, we've grown now to 45 people. Uh, I, I wanted to train my team on the right way to do marketing from my perspective. And um, the, I'm an amateur physicist, and i very amateur, but I'm very interested in, in, in physicists and what physicists do. And I learned a lot from studying the theories and laws of um, uh, Newton. And I wanted to be able to apply to business something the equivalent of every action has an equal and opposite reaction. A body in motion tends to stay in motion. What can I do in business that would hold true? And I developed an equation which we operate by today, and I think you should operate your businesses by today because it always works. I don't guarantee everything that we do, but this equation always works. And there's three things to the equation for all of your businesses. This is what we work on, actually, at MSCM and my firm. It's C plus A plus M equals PG. So what does that mean? You have to C, capture new business all the time. New clients, new customers, you have to be capturing them. If you stop capturing new business, the high that you have because you had a great year will go away. Those people leave, they get, um, uh, they get uh, recruited by other businesses, they move, they go out of business, and through attrition you lose them. So you have to keep filling your uh, ranks with new clients. And you do that through intelligent internet marketing, not building website per se, but intelligent business internet marketing, PR, advertising, all those elements. That's the C part. C plus A. A means once you get a client or customer, do you really enrich the relationship? Do you, do you keep communicating with them about their needs? And showing them the portfolio of things that you can offer them. If you're not offering a portfolio of things, why not? You should be. Because people have trust in you. So they want to buy from you. But you're saying, unless you increase the portfolio, I don't want to sell to you. And so they go someplace else. Even though you've done the hard work of winning them over as a client. So it's really another term for upsell and cross-sell, but in an educational way. And the M, C plus A plus M, M is to maintain customers for life, for a very long time. Because the lifetime value of a relationship, when you look at yourself and say, how much would I spend to get a new client or a new, co or a new customer? You can't, what's the question you have to ask? If I ask any of you, how much would you spend to get a new customer? What's the question you have to ask me? How much would I make from them? When? Who said that? Of course, the business relationship. It's a lifetime value, right? So people say, should I spend $1,000 to get a customer who's going to oh, make a simple case? Should I spend $1,000 to get a customer from whom I will make $1,000 or $800 profit this year? Should I spend $1,000 to get a customer for whom I'll make $800 this year. I won't do that any day of the week. On paper, it seems wrong because you spent 1000 to get eight. But what about the next year? You already spent 1000 Now they're in your camp. And so the lifetime value, even if you just say the lifetime value is three years, when it really can be, we have clients, I had, one, I had breakfast with one this morning. Let's go from one person firm, when he's done with us, 240 people now. And that's a lifetime value, and it's also a human value because I appreciate and love the fact that there's so many long-term relationships at MSCO. And one of the reasons I was able to sell most of the business, uh, I'm still CEO, that was part of the deal, but at a high value because we have these enduring relationships because I understand lifetime value. And the way you get lifetime value is by educating people on the full scope of things that you have now and will have. So that, the M is to maintain them. And if you do C, capture, A, amplify the relationship, M, maintain that relationship. And by the way, part of the way you maintain that relationship is to make sure that it really is a pleasure to do business with you. Now, you may think it is. So so many times people come into our conference room at MSEO 
And I said, well, what's the likelihood of this? So, right. We, our people are, whoa, it is so good to do business with us. We're struggling right now, but it's not because it's hard. Doing business with us is like a day at the ballpark. So I say, do you mind if we call your number right now? Right in the conference room, right in front of them. Well, why do you want to do that? I just want to see what it's like when you call up. Okay, so they give us the number, and we get a recording. Hi, this is Jane from ABC Co. Uh, please pick for the following prompts. There's 18 prompts. You're on the phone for nine minutes. It's, it's like, it's the script, and they, they don't. How many of you call your own business on off hours? Most of us don't. Most of us don't. Most of us don't go through the hard work. I do it all the time. I'm not every day, but I do it all the time to make sure that we're keeping that up because it's important. It's wrong for you to call MSEO or to reach your marketingsucks.com, which happens to be a primary driver of our business. Uh, it's not eloquent, but it's effective because people feel the marketing sucks. Uh, and related to that, Nine years ago, I decided to go on the radio in the New York Tri-State area and make an investment. So sometimes in business, we have to make investments, right? And it's a little scary. How many people here have made investments where, in operating your business, where you're a little afraid because, or holding back right now because you're not sure you're making money back? Every hand better go up because everybody's, everybody feels that way. Um, or else you're not in business. Because there is no guaranteed method that you're going to always get your money back. But anyway, you have to take some chances. If you don't want to take chances, there is an application on your computer to get a job for the post office. And that's where you belong. So you have to take a chance because that's what investing in a business is. So I tried nine years ago, I took out a $10,000 flight on WCBS radio in New York. And I don't want to throw $10,000. That was my company wholly then. I mean, that's a, that's a vacation, $10,000. Something else I might want. But you have to invest in your business. So I thought about it for a while, and it's easier not to take the chance, but I did. And uh, we made $175,000 on the first, it's a two-week campaign. We made $175,000 on that first month's campaign. Um, so we doubled down, then we tripled down, then we quadrupled down. Last year we spent $1.4 million on New York Radio. But I'm not saying anybody should go near that. I'm saying small investments, if it's $500 for a battery out of site, where your prospect of customers may be, whether it's financial services, banking, home remodeling, whatever it is you do, let people see who you are, because you cannot grow if you're a well-kept secret. So if you sit there like this and say, yeah, prevent offense, I'm not risking any money or anything. I'm saying small, test. All of our clients, we test. The typical thing a marketing firm says to a client is, what's your budget? We never say that. Because I won't, don't want to spend anybody's budget. I want to simply test small things to see where the traction is so that we know where the traction is, then we can invest in it. And we really had 1.4 million this year, last year on radio, it probably should have been 2.4. So we're growing, we just, I was just telling somebody before we just bought the Mets. So at every Mets game, there are MSU marketing sucks commercials on every Mets game now, on radio. So um, the, the basic, and I'll leave you with one last thing. I'll take some questions that you may have. It's, it's really, the way to think about this, folks, very simply is, imagine if you could reach just 10 people a day who don't know what you do, who don't know you yet, but are people who would be of the right profile to buy from you. Just 10 a day. And with the internet, that's a tiny model, not a tiny number. So let's say you reach 10 people a day who are in the category that they can do business with you. And of course, it doesn't sound like a lot, but in the course of a year, it's 3,650 people. 
So let's cut that in half and say it's 1,800 people. Let's cut that in half and say it's 900 people. Let's cut that in half and say it's 450. Let's cut that in half and say it's 220. Let's cut that in half and say it's 110. Let's cut that in half and say it's 55. Anybody here not want 55 new customers? It's math. And the 10 is a very modest number. And that's the model that we use to get 10 new people a day, but then it becomes sometimes 1,000 people a day. As I told you, one of some of my LinkedIn posts, for example, for us and clients, we get 75,000 in a day. So it's just mathematical. Don't be fooled by all this SEO buzzwords, nonsense, horse crap that people are trying to sell you because that's what it is. It's a simple thing to have a clear message about what you say. You know, the hardest thing for people when I ask them, so what do you do, but I need you to answer me in a sentence. Tell me about what you do, what your company does in one sentence. 99% of people cannot do that. If you can't do it, how are customers going to understand? There's no patience for you to give them, well, let me sit down and explain to you. Do you have a half an hour? No, nobody wants that. Unless they bought in through some uh, form of communication. So that's what I think of marketing, and that's what we do, and it's not that we're, uh, you know, Nobel Prize winning, but it's, you don't have to be because there's a model. You need a strong message. You need to know how to get the message out. You don't need to spend a lot of money. You should spend a lot of money when you find uh, an avenue that for every dollar you spend, you get three, five, seven. That's it. And it's no fun being in business when you're worrying about cash flow, when there's no lead showing up. I mean, if I didn't wake up in the morning every single day and have leads here, it, I would be, it, it would be a different kind of life. Not every lead is somebody that I want to do business with. But I need leads here. I want a lead funnel. I want people coming to me. And I don't want to be in a position of calling any of you up in the room and say, hey, do you want a marketing firm? And I would not do that. You want people to come to you because they hear a message or a thought that you have. That you have something new about construction or banking or insurance or whatever that I don't know. And then they come to you because you've struck a chord. So I will uh, happy to take any questions anybody has. Um, Mark, I have to know what you put up in December on LinkedIn that got the 70,000 questions. The 800,000? I'm sorry. What? You put up a blog for a post. So you can publish on everybody. Everybody here can publish on LinkedIn. Can you tell me what the title was? Yes. So it was a controversial title. So it was why you must lie on job interviews and what you must lie about. Now, why did I write that? Everybody here has gone for a job at one point in their life. It was a summer job or an adult job, or whatever. And what happens? You can't tell the truth. The whole system is geared against you telling the truth. Well, you say, hi, I'm here because I heard you can make a lot of money here and not work hard. <laughs> the system is designed for you to lie. So you have to lie. I'm not saying lie about where you went to school or that you won a Nobel Prize, you know, or uh, any of those kinds of substantive things. But the system is, I'm always looking at how the system is structured I wrote a post that got, uh, I think it was 600,000 views six weeks ago about why McDonald's is dying. That was the title, why McDonald's is dying. It, it is a dying business to me. It's still strong, it's still big, it's still all over the world, but it's dying. And you know what? I got a thousand comments of the uh, people who took time to write comments, so it was 600,000 views, a thousand comments on, you know, publicly written, and people were saying, well, McDonald's is dying because it's, it, it, it's poison. You get fat. I want all my kids to eat the garbage. The bathrooms are disgusting. The people are surly. The food is too expensive. Where's the burger? You ever tried one of their horrible plastic salads? And so with all these things, I went back on social media and I challenged McDonald's to respond. And I said, you know, all these people that are responding here, offer them a chance to come into the nearest McDonald's Give them a free meal 
and try to win them back. Silence. So I really went, I stepped it up, and I had stuck to attack, not attack, you know, in a, in a uh, adverse mean way, but the CEO. And I challenged him, how can you, you have 700 people working in social media at McDonald's. What are they doing? What, what are they doing? They're talking about gang sites or, the, or worse. Uh, why are they responding to this? And why aren't you responding to this? And, and this is true, three weeks later he was fired. I don't think I played that role, but, but I didn't help him. Yeah. Smart, new client. Excuse me? I need you, new client. Well, you know, we, uh, I didn't do it for that reason. I didn't do it for that reason. I, I'm interested in what's going on, and I like to write about things of what's going on. You know, when I, when I first did the radio spots on your marketing stuff, when I wrote the book, Random House said, great book, love it, but we're not using that word sucks. I said, well, then you're not getting the book. And you know, I won that round. Then we went on radio nine years ago, ABC, CBS, all of them said, we're not using that word. And I went to war with them, and then they all started using it, and, and now it's just, you know, they, they realized I wasn't doing a gratuitous, provocative thing. It was the title of a major, best-selling book by a big publisher. So uh, sometimes you have to fight for what you believe in. Uh, I think there was another question. Yes. What about it? What is MSU your company? We're a marketing firm. Oh, what does it stand for? It's a secret code. <laughs> now, I don't want to get it. Originally, when I started, it was Mark Stevens' company 21 years ago, but I got completely revolted by the idea that the company was had my name. So I just changed it to a completely meaningless nonsense of initials. The PC, PG, perpetual growth. So C plus A plus M, capture plus amplify plus maintain, equals PG, perpetual growth. And you will get that. If you actually are always bringing a business in, upselling, cross-selling, educating them, maintaining them, you will always grow. The problem is with everybody in this room and me at times too, is we forget to do one of those three things. We don't do them strongly enough. We, we don't bring new business in. We don't tell them what we do, or we get sloppy and the service isn't good and people leave because then they become uh, easy candidates for somebody else who wants to take our business from us. Okay. Yes. Okay. I have uh, two doors. One is in public relations company and one is a marketing company. Where do you see those industries going in the future? Maybe advice that I can give my doors. Uh, I just see them evolving more uh, on one hand, more technologically, but the basic ability to craft the message that excites people, you can't do techno technologically. So the key to, if I, all of you are busy all day long, you have all kinds of things thrown at you. It's only the thing that you hear that is very provocative or very interesting or very compelling or very fresh that you pay attention to. So if they stop believing in the conventions and the, if there are young women that are in this business and they're listening to all these buzzword nonsense crap, they will, forget it, let them, and I, I actually get this question from young people all the time, tell them to think of a, I told my sons when they were growing up, when they were like when they were like eight and ten, then ten and twelve, then twelve. And 12. They had no idea what I was talking about at the time, because we always hiked. And in my hikes, I gave them I called it an uh, MBA through hiking. <laughs> and I would take them out and hike with them in, in Bedford, where I live. And I would say, "So, I got a problem, guys. Let's solve it together on this hike." So we started at eight and ten. They never looked at me and said, "Hey, Dad, we're eight and ten. What do you mean? They used to listen and started thinking, and you know what? They didn't know that much about business or anything, but they knew me. And so I remember the first time my older son said, well, 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 well hold on, Dad, I hear that. But that's you. You're, you're the fault there. You always do that kind of thing. I remember that so well. So on a human level, they were able to give me advice um, that uh, 
made me look at myself in the mirror and change some of the ways that I was doing some things. So I would just say that it's, it's always going to be a very important part of business. The most important part of business to me is the sales guys and women. So you have no sales guys, all the high titles and all sophisticated stuff comes to nothing. Tom Watson, who founded the modern IBM, said nothing happens unless a sales made. And I love that. And so salespeople to me are critical. Most marketing people think salespeople are dirt. I love so I learned how to, I learned business selling as a lower middle class kid in Queens, selling Christmas trees, uh, magazines, everything I can sell. And you learn so much about human behavior and about how do you approach people and how do you make a sale and it's it's just it's it's so much more valuable from my perspective than an MBA. In fact, I was asked to speak at Wharton two years ago, and I said I'm, I'd be willing to speak under one condition. And they said, what's that condition? And I said, I have to name the speech. And they said, well, of course you can name the speech. What do you want to call it? And this is Wharton. And I said, I'd like to call it everything you learned here is a waste of time. <laughs> and they said, you really want to call it that? And I said, yes, and I actually gave the speech under that. Now, I did it somewhat tongue-in-cheek. You know, I respect what an institution is. My younger son was recruited to go there. He didn't go, but he was recruited to go there. Um, and, but however, I did point out to the faculty and said, you know, the thing is, these kids are learning from you about business, but you've never owned a lemonade stand. So everything on your blackboards work out perfectly. But if they don't work out perfectly on your blackboards or mine, we have to get it right to get it wrong. In business school, they can get it right from the beginning because they don't have any test of the real world. They're teaching. And there's, there's value in teaching, obviously. But, um, yes? What, what business did you sell? What, what kind of business were you in? What? Initially. Well, I've had. Before I've, you retired. Uh, many, but I mean, I my first business was a Christmas tree store when I was 15 years old when I bought a, tree, a load of Christmas trees from Canada and uh, by myself, I was 15 and got a, a space from a Texaco station in Queens and I worked for two weeks during the, during the Christmas season. I sold all my trees and I made no money. But man, was that a great experience. <laughs> and then I went on, the business I sold in 93 was a business that um, licensed the capitalists to sell Financial products. I sold the business to Guardian Life Insurance. Um, so there was a whole bunch of businesses in between. I've always believed in building and selling, building and selling. We have time for one more, Valerie. Mark, share with us um, a lemonade stand story, if you will, of one of your clients that talked he or she and their business came in in a woeful state and doing some very basic and simple things went from this level to that level. Um, sure. Um, So many. Um, we had a client that um, uh, came to see me and was almost in tears. Uh, this is about six years ago. And he had uh, inherited a business from his father. He was not a kid, he was about 15 years old, and he was running the business. His dad had a model in mind, and when his dad was running the business, it was a nice business that sent all the kids to college and they lived nicely. And, but times had changed. And also, the, my client, who's my client now, who had to adapt to a changing world, um, didn't know how to do it. And I don't want to give away who it is, but they were trying, he's trying to sell a high-end service to the Greenwiches and the Scarsdales of the world in our area with a model that looked like um, Yonkers. Nothing wrong with Yonkers, my wife was, was, was I gotta tell you a story too about something that Mark that really I'll end with one thing that really I know it'd be recently, but I'll, I will finish this. So we we forced him, 
obviously with his permission at the end of the day, to change virtually everything he did, the name of the company, the way he positioned himself, the roots of the business, the um, legacy of his dad, everything had to change. Uh, it did not require a big expense, it required an investment in the way they were positioned to the world. Because if you want to appeal to a homeowner in Scarsdale, uh, Bronxville, Rye, Bedford, you have to be able to, in a high-end service, present yourself as a high-end provider, or else they're not going to open the door to you. So, every, but everything has changed. And in change, there is difficulty, because you have to change your operations, you have to change your mindset, you have to do it, but we've, it's been a beautiful ride. And it won't be if we just stop here, because we have to always um, change. If I can just tell you folks one story about something. We got a call about six weeks ago from, some of you may know this place, I don't mind talking about it because it incensed me actually. It's an orphanage and a child care um, center in Yonkers. Some of you may know what I'm talking about right now. Okay? So they said four firms were chosen in Westchester to compete for a $250,000 branding engagement. And we were one of them. So would we, would we compete and uh, fill out the RFP? I don't do RFPs, but I grew up as a virtual orphan, and part of their mission is to take care of orphans, so I wanted to play with all of this. I'll never do an RFP, but I wanted to do this. So I sat down with my members of my team, and we started to fill out the uh, proposal, and I spent 20 minutes and said, I, I can't do this, I called them up. Now, it's crazy, by the way, for an orphanage to spend $250,000 on branding. I mean, it's nonsense that they got a grant from the state, and the state knows how to waste our money really well. So, I mean, why would an orphanage need a branding program? So, uh, I said, you know what, I got a better idea. We'll do it for free. Completely pro bono, no strings attached, everything. And I actually want to mentor some of the kids. Wow, we'll get back to you tomorrow. They call, they call me tomorrow? No. We have the state's money, we want to spend it. I said, take the money and put it in the medium. We're going to do the, the 250 you're going to give to some firm. I'm going to do it for free. Use it for something else, or God forbid, give it back to the state. And I was actually going to make a big deal out of this with the media and everything, because it really incensed me. Not that, I mean, I was giving a charitable donation, uh, but they didn't want to do it because of something that is perversely wrong in our society right now, actually. Yes. So do we have time for one more, anybody? Yeah. Uh, one more, and that's it. Yeah. Taking a business from one level to the next. That's the definition of my company, the definition of marketing, to me. And no one, I don't think anybody else will say that because they get caught up in this traffic. Taking a business from one level to the next. Whatever that level is, to the next. You said doubling doubling in 18 months, yeah? Well, it doesn't always have to be the way. I've always lived that way, and I believe that stretch of doubling um, from uh, whatever you are now to uh, double your revenues and profitability in 18 months is, is a stretch, but it's a doable one. I've done it, we've done it for clients. If you miss that time, you'll make it up the next time. But it gives you something to strive for, and it's not unrealistic. If I said, you know, grow by, you know, 2,000%, that's ridiculous. This is doable. So anyway, thank you all. The easiest way to reach, I have cards everybody wants one, and the easiest way to reach us if you want to talk or anything more is, the simplest one to remember is justmarketingsucks.com. <laughs> thank you.